What's up, everybody? I'm the Goju Ryu Philosopher, and this is our next episode of History of Goju Ryu. Last time, I discussed the fact that Miyagi Chojun Sensei added quite a number of kata to his Goju Ryu syllabus that were not taught by Kyoda Juhatsu, Higaona Sensei's other student, in his Toon Ryu style. Both of my Tokui kata, which I've practiced with quite extensively and which used to be my go-to in competition back when in-person competition was still a thing, uh, were added to Goju Ryu after Higaona's teaching, Shisochin and Kururunfa, for those of you who are interested. Many of these kata have roots in other styles of Chinese martial arts besides Minhe Chuen, the whooping crane style which Higaona learned and to which Goju Ryu claims its origin. So, when was it that these additional styles were incorporated into Goju Ryu? First off, there is a fair amount of evidence that Higaona Kanryo Sensei learned from more teachers than just the famous Ryu Ryu Ko. Out of the 17 years that he spent in China, it's likely that he spent the first four of those without even ever meeting his primary teacher, and no doubt he continued training with other masters and other styles while he was learning from Ryu Ryu Ko. Higaona, as well as Nakaima Norisato, the other Okinawan karateka who studied under Ryu Ryu Ko, likely met him through the dojo run for Ryukyu and expats by the Kojo family, where they were no doubt exposed to many different styles in martial arts. However, whether Higaona actually practiced and taught kata other than Sanshin, Seisan, Sanseiru, and Suparempe is difficult to know for certain. While it is possible that he taught his two students different sets of kata, the more likely scenario is that Miyagi Chojun added these kata afterwards. Miyagi-sensei had many chances to be exposed to various different styles of Chinese martial arts. Over the course of his life, Miyagi trained and visited with many masters, such as Chinese martial artists living in Okinawa like Go Kenki, but most importantly in trying to determine his external influences are the several trips that Miyagi made to China in order to study the Chinese martial arts directly from their source. The best-known trip that Miyagi Chojun-sensei took to Fujian province happened in 1915 or perhaps 1916, soon after the death of Higaona Kanryo-sensei. This trip was likely undertaken alongside Go Kenki, who's going to be the subject of his own video in a few episodes, and who also may be the origin of some of the other Goju Ryu kata, most notably Shisochin, which, in addition to resembling the name of a dog boxing form that I mentioned last time, could also be related to the form Shu Men, that still exists in several forms of white crane, including whooping crane and feeding crane. It seems that Gokenki was very close with Miyagi-sensei, and heavily influenced the path and the development of his training, as well as being crucial in introducing him to many Chinese martial artists during his travels and at home. However, this would have actually been Miyagi's second trip, and he only stayed in China on this trip for a few months. During this time, he supposedly located either the grave of Ryuryuko, or the building in which he used to teach. The primary legacy of this trip, however, would be the introduction of the kata tensho to the Goju Ryu syllabus, since it was supposedly derived from techniques that Miyagi studied and learned during this trip. This suggests that if the origin of tensho is indeed the Kojo family dojo, that Miyagi traveled there and trained during this time. Modern descendants of this dojo still practice the style of luohan chuen, or monk fist boxing, which helps to connect the lineage of Goju Ryu to that style, however tenuously. However, given the short time frame of this travel, it's almost certain that Miyagi didn't learn much else besides Tensho in order to bring back during this trip. Not long before this trip, however, Miyagi-sensei had made a similar trip to Fujo alongside Nakamoto Eisho, which had been cut short by news of Higaona-sensei's failing health. Some sources believe that this trip, as opposed to the later one, was when he visited Ryuryuko's grave. Whether this is the case or not is not as relevant as the general fact that he did attempt to investigate his teacher's lineage during these two trips. In fact, it's possible that these two trips were two parts of what was originally intended to be one period of studying abroad that happened to be cut short by the death of his teacher Higaona-sensei. After his teacher's death, Miyagi-sensei spent the better part of the next two decades studying, improving, and promoting karate in Okinawa and in Japan. In 1934, he wrote the Karate-do Gaisetsu, the outline of Karate-do, one of his few writings to survive the war, which is a matter-of-fact outline of the history of karate, including versions of the story of its introduction to Okinawa that make very little reference of the mythologized histories that currently abound. After a trip to Hawaii, Miyagi made his third and final trip to China, once again alongside Go Kenki. This time, his destination was Shanghai, suggesting that he may have been trying to expand his horizons 
beyond styles with which he was already familiar during this time. It's tempting to assert that this journey may have exposed Miyagi to techniques and ideas that changed the course of his teaching, since several of his students, most notably Miyazato Eiichi, noted that his pre-war and post-war styles of instruction were incredibly different. However, given the information from that same source, he very likely did not pick up any new kata during this travel. Whatever Miyagi may have encountered in Shanghai, this was to be his last opportunity to travel to China, since shortly thereafter he accepted teaching positions with the Prefectural Teachers College and the Naha Police Force. He didn't stop making trips or attempting to research the martial arts, but these jobs kept him more or less based in Naha for the rest of his life. So, now that we've been over the trips to China that Miyagi Chojun made, we have to ask, what did he learn? One thing that might stand out to you is that, despite making several trips, Miyagi Chojun sensei didn't spend a particularly long time studying in China. Additionally, not all of his journeys were devoted specifically to studying the martial arts. He spent as much, if not more time during his first two trips, searching for historical records of where his teacher had studied. Higao no Kanryo sensei stayed in China for 17 years and studied under Ryu Ko for at least 13 of those. But Miyagi only studied in China for a few months at a time, for a maximum of about a year. If he learned all of his additional kata in China, then that would mean he learned six new kata in only a few months after having spent about a decade and a half learning the four other forms. Therefore, I think it's fairly unlikely that Miyagi learned all or even many of his additional kata during his trips to China. What isn't really in dispute, though, is that he learned Rokishu, the form on which he based Tensho, during one of these first two trips to China, and was likely inspired by many of the Chinese martial arts that he encountered during his travels. Miyagi's fascination with the Chinese martial arts was so strong that he continued to seek out expats and native Okinawan students of these arts, such as Kinjo Matsu, in order to continue his exploration of these principles wherever he could. It's likely that he went on to use some or most of these ideas in order to create and synthesize several new kata, which would explain the kata that he added to the Goju Ryu syllabus. Unfortunately, however, there is so much of what Miyagi Sensei learned that is simply lost to history. Much of Miyagi Sensei's writings and studies, the results of several decades of research and practice, were lost during the Second World War, with written records being destroyed and many of his students and family members either being killed or being unable or unwilling to continue training. Miyazato Eiichi Sensei said in an interview that there was a huge difference between how Miyagi taught students before and after the war, and that a number of his pre-war senior students had stopped training and either had forgotten what they had learned under him, or had never really learned the full syllable in the first place. Because of this loss of information, we really can't be certain what Miyagi learned during his travel to China, or what he added from those experiences into his training. Thank you for watching this episode of History of Goju Ryu. Make sure to catch up on previous episodes of this series, especially the one right before this, on the kata that Miyagi added to his syllabus. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, which will mean one heck of a lot to me since I watch the like count on my videos like a bald eagle. And while you're down there, why don't you leave me a comment letting me know where you would like to travel to study more of the martial arts. If you want to see more history of Goju Ryu videos as they come out, it'd be good to subscribe to this channel and maybe even turn on notifications so that you get a little update whenever I upload new videos. The next planned video is going to cover another, slightly less known trip that Miyagi took to Hawaii. I hope to see you there, I've been the Goju Ryu Philosopher, and let's travel the world and the seven seas.